So uh, with no further ado, let us uh, call to stage to Lars Silberbauer, Senior Global Director of Social Media and Video at Lego Corporation, and Reggie Bradford, the Senior Vice President of Startup Ecosystem and Accelerator in Oracle. Both are founders in heart, but today working in the big corporates, and they're going to speak about breaking through blocks in innovation. We had the pleasure of meeting Reggie just three months ago in Israel when opening their acceleration program of Oracle in Israel. And now let's welcome them into stage like Startup let's Grind. Give them a warm Startup Grind welcome. Good luck. All right, I think you're here. Hi, everybody. Hello. How's everybody doing? Good, awesome. Everybody tired or asleep? Hopefully not. No jet lag. All right, so I'm Reggie, this is Lars, and we're going to talk about how corporates work with startups and uh, this kind of thing. Super quickly, um, my background, uh, even though I work for one of the biggest uh, technology companies, I come from the startup background, so I've got similar DNA to a lot of you folks in the crowd. I've had three startups uh, that were all, uh, that I was, you know, founder or very early employee of that all were acquired. Most recently, I had a company called Vitru that um, became the leader in social marketing in the cloud, which was acquired by Oracle. This is how I got to know Lars. We'll talk about that in a second. And uh, now I lead the global startup ecosystem stuff, you know, for Oracle. So maybe Lars, give a little bit of background on yourself and then we'll jump in. Sure, um, so I'm a, I'm a toys, toy salesman. Um, and uh, so basically what I do, I, I was uh, hired for, um, at Lego six years ago to basically build social media from, from scratch. At that point, I didn't even have a Facebook page, uh, but I was also hired to, to try to change the company's mindset on how to, how to do marketing. Um, and I think we've been, been fairly successful in, in doing that. And uh, now I run a team of around 50 people. Uh, I'm based in London, um, but I have a team in the uh, US, uh, Singapore, Shanghai, uh, still in Denmark. Lego is a privately held company, still a Danish company. Um, and we run all social media platforms, all video platforms globally, develop a lot of in-house uh, content, and also really trying to change the company and the mindset uh, around, around digital marketing. Awesome. Well, let's jump in. Um, l let me just kind of frame this up. And we all know the trends. Um, Something like four out of 10 of the Fortune 100 companies won't be here in the next 10 years. Yet also, nine out of 10 startups fail, uh, six out of 10 that aren't there after five years fail. So we both need each other. Uh, the, the big challenge is there's a lot of failure out there, and this is a big concept. Um, business uh, is being disrupted left and right. Uh, more change is happening now than probably in the history of business. Uh, speed is uh, increasing. More and more platforms, the world is increasingly connected. The cost of computing power has dropped dramatically, so you have this startup ecosystem that's developing literally all over the world. You can create a startup anywhere and compete. This creates multiple opportunities and also challenges, and how do you sort of break through that? So I think today we want to really for the next 15 minutes or so, talk about some examples and what's worked and, you know, kind of how this is, you know, happening. I can just tell you, the company I work for, Oracle, you know, we have 140,000 employees and I'm tasked with leading, you know, how do we work more like a startup? How do we change our culture? And we're doing that through the accelerator, the ecosystem, uh, changing how we deliver our cloud, uh, how we price it, how we package it. Uh, how we contract, you know, complete overhaul of the entire business, not just acquiring companies, but how we go to market and do things. So let's jump right in. Um, Lars, uh, I want to say how we met, first of all. Um, so I was in the startup chair in 2010, and we got a, uh, RF, a request, you know, an email request from this company called Lego, and I was in this tiny startup where you know, social media, trying to survive, had not hit our tipping point yet, and uh, the company was Lego. We we're like, holy shit, you know, this is a, a huge validation point that a big company like Lego, an international company, we were a startup in Atlanta, had contacts to work together. So uh, that's how I got to know Lars. Maybe Lars, you can talk a little bit about what you guys are up to. Yeah, and I can also just, just add to that story because I think, um 
being in a big company and, and having the task of actually changing a company from the inside and acting like an entrepreneur, um, you're not always given a ton of headcount. So, so you need to find allies with the same mindset. And that was also why I reached out to a number of different uh, startups and then ended up working with, uh, with Vitru and, uh, and Reggie in finding allies to actually help me change the company and, and, and bring the company on that, on that change journey. And I think that that is where we really need each other, like startups and, and companies, to, to have change agents inside the company that can actually work with startups that can fuel them and, and also help the startups actually to take, take, some, take the next steps in their journey of actually working with, with bigger companies. So I hope, hope it's, a, it's kind of like a mutual learning process that you go through when you work with, uh, with, uh, with startups, also from the company's uh, side. So that's, that's like kind of the, the reason why we reached out to, to you at, the, at that point. And then maybe a little bit more on, we talked last time, how, how do you guys approach innovation and, and, and Lego? Yeah. Um, so, so the product that we sell is basically the same product we've been selling for the last many, 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 many years. It's a plastic brick with studs on it and a small trademark. And, and the challenge for us is how, how do we keep that relevant in a time where everything is disrupting and we know everything is disrupting and changing constantly. And, and the way that, that I've set up my team and the way that we approach this basically to, to design uh, the structure of the teams, um, to design for disruption, to basically not, not have the ability and not, not have the goal of building a competency in one area. Like we should not be good at doing Facebook posts, but we should be the best in that industry to actually constantly change what we do and leverage and also sometimes actually change um, uh, and disrupt ourselves and disrupt the business that we are in and not just be impacted by disruption that is happening to us. So that's, that's the, way, the approach that we basically took uh, in LEGO. And, uh, and again, like having the same product, we cannot change the product, we don't want to change the product. So a lot of the innovation that we've done is, is, is definitely in the marketing area. Um, getting the inspiration from, from the industry and getting the inspiration from where the consumers are going and then very quickly translating it into, into the way that we do business. So one, one of the things that I always admired about LEGO, to your point, you know, the product is relatively straightforward, but the, uh, what you guys have been able to do and grow, privately held company, still controlled by the same family, but as you grow inevitably, there's corporate bureaucracy, there's politics, I'm guessing, there's layers. How do you guys kind of, how do you work through all that? I think, I think everyone who's worked in a, in a, in a bigger company knows, knows the yep. challenges of like both the, the, the reason why we have a strong company that's lasted many, many years is the structures that are in the company, but also that is, of course, hindering innovation and, and change. Uh, so, so for me, it was a lot about in that change journey to move very quickly, to make, like, prove that things are working, and then basically communicate and spend a ton of time communicating in the company. And then, as, as mentioned before, really teaming up with, with startups, teaming up with, with people that can help you uh, also with that mindset, but also help you to keep the spirit actually on the, on the tough days where you're feeling the, the, the company bureaucracy is really, is really limiting you. Um, so I think that's, that's, that's the journey that we need to go on. And I think it's also to, to look at sometimes how you can actually use the, the resources of a big company in, in, in the right way. Like for instance, how you can, don't look at legal as a constraint, but you can also look at, at legal as a resource. And if you really understand the, 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 the abilities you have in the area, for instance, we work a lot with content, and if you know the copyright laws in different areas, then you can also know how to actually leverage those so you actually can, can use the, the competence you have in a big company of having lawyers and having attorneys uh, on board for, for your, your change journey. So I think it's, it's both working through those barriers, but also really leveraging the, the, the resources that you have in a, in a large company. Yeah, and, and that's a great point. And I think um, you really, you have to have a, the buy-in too, right? I mean, you gotta have at the top, uh, or at some level, you know, you've got to be able to, uh, to, to be able to in a big company, to move fast, mm -hmm. to take risks, you know, fail, uh, and not, you know, be risking, you know, your job or your career. And that's kind of how I feel like, you know, frankly speaking, in my position now, I'm, I'm a, I call myself dispassionate in a good way. You know, I'm, I, I care very much, but I think because I'm in a unique position because I've been acquired and I have this kind of interesting mindset, like, I don't care so much about, you know, uh, I care about my reputation, I don't mean that, but it's like, you know, we're going to get this done, and if we don't, you know, 
somebody else can do it, you know, kind of thing. So I think uh, having that authenticity and transparency, surrounding yourself with people that have that mentality and mindset and get shit done kind of mentality. Ruth. So now let's switch to how to startups, because there's a lot of startups out here, and, and you know, one of the things I you know, do a lot of talks with startups is how do you sell into the enterprise? Uh, how do you get that first sale? How do you position yourself you know, in front of the enterprise? And, and th that's always something that I focused on in all three of my you know, startups was it was all about generating revenue and finding reference customers. And that's kind of how we're trying to model our accelerator, you know, because otherwise there's no value. You know, if we can't get access to customers, then it's not worthwhile. But in my last startup, um, we really focused on co-creation, you know, of building our product uh, roadmap with our customers. So frankly speaking, we went to Apple and they helped us design and build uh, with requirements. We went to them and said, here's our vision for a publishing capability. You know, what is your vision? They literally helped us, you know, create that. McDonald's helped us with our content management system and then P Procter & Game with analytics and certainly you guys had a huge part of that, which is really giving the corporate empowerment that you feel like you can actually shape the roadmap and you can have a substantial part of the vision of the future and you know be a willing participant you don't necessarily have to be on the board or whatever and then also approaching companies like Lego with credibility with a point of view with thought leadership and adding value to the conversation and then also in my experience me staying involved, you know, heavily as, you know, a, a, as a, a leader in those key relationships and not just passing it off to, you know, social manager or somebody, you know, showing that I'm engaged at the high levels, you know, I'm just curious, what have you seen? Yeah, I, I think it's, as, as you mentioned, it's, it's a lot about that, that personal commitment and also knowing that you're not really selling to a company, you're selling to one person or several persons that are on a journey and, and understanding them and also staying committed as a sponsor, like if you're a, a, on, a, on a senior level, staying committed to be a sponsor of that, that um, journey that you're on and also with that relationship with the startup and, and the company and always having that person that you can escalate to if things are not moving in the right direction. Because if you're working with a startup, you can't expect them to have everything sorted out with procurement and they, uh, if everything that you need as a company is sorted out. So you need to have that personal commitment from a senior person to actually fix things when you need them from a company point of view. Because it can easily get killed, that, that relationship, if, again, procurement, legal, uh, et cetera, et cetera, is not happy with, with the way that you, you go about it. Um, so I think it, it's, it's all about that understanding the change agent that you're selling to in the company, understanding their needs, and then also knowing what, 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 in what ways you can actually change uh, your product, your company, to satisfy them without, of course, doing customized solutions for everyone in, right. in the world. It's also hard with, the, like you just brought up a great point, with procurement and you're in a startup and in some cases the procurement department's bigger than the entire company. And how do you, you know, having a champion on the other side that works with procurement says, hey, we can live with this, we can live with that. But then as a startup, you have to have flexibility. Um, and I know in our case, we were dealing with kind of a new medium, right? We were dealing with procurement department that was working with marketing departments around, uh, you know, uh, media insertion orders, but not really buying SaaS. Mm back then, and so we're selling in a whole new paradigm shift around, you know, terms and conditions and all that kind of stuff. What else have you kind of seen in um, good startups that have, you know, made a difference for you guys, or just any advice you would give on, you know, how to best people that are out there that want to, obviously, everybody wants to sell something to Lego. You guys are a great reference customer, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think it's, it's all through the whole the whole building a relationship. So it's from the initial contact and say, I, I get approached sometimes five, 10 times a day. Um, and, and, and you see sometimes like cold calling and you see cold emails that are just like wrong name on like yeah. wrong. Like they have no idea about who I am, what the company really does. Uh, they don't have invested, like haven't invested anything in actually understanding what business Lego is in. Um, and I think that that's the first like, really big turn off in building a relationship that's not even knowing the, the name of the person that we're approaching. Uh, so I think a lot about it is the initial content, you need to do your homework. 
rather reach out to fewer companies, but really understand who are you reaching out to, what, what is that individual actually doing in the company, and how can you actually add, yeah, add value, but also be really honest about, can you actually add value? Is this the right company to approach at the right time in your company's journey? Uh, I think a lot of startups want to like, really go big um, first time, when they're like three people in a garage, but that's probably not where you want to have like 20 people in a procurement uh, department showing up to, 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 the, to the first meeting. Um, so I think it's a lot about doing your homework, getting to know, and then throughout the process, uh, building and stay committed to that relationship. So that's a, that's a timeless process, the relationship. I think it still stands. All right, I know we have about five minutes left, and I want to jump in to talk about Lego and where you're headed and the, what you're leading. I think every time I talk to you, I get more excited about how you're reinventing uh, the whole media business. And um, so maybe first touch on um, some of the new innovations and what you guys are focused on in digital and the you know, new channels and some of the other stuff we talked about, whatever you can. Sure. Um, so so what, what we're looking at at LEGO and what LEGO is, 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 has developed into in the last 10 years is coming from a toy producer and a toy manufacturer to becoming not into a media company, but also becoming a media company. So we're producing tons of like Lego movie, Lego Batman movie, uh, like blockbuster movies. We're producing tons of TV content. And, and uh, in my team, we're producing, basically we have studios, we have a lot of, lot of different digital content coming out with very fast turnarounds. So that's the, the business that we're in, that I'm cha changing my teams to become it's really be about becoming digital publishers instead of just being marketeers or creating uh, advertising. I also think that we are looking heavily into China. Like we're trying to focus more and more on China and Asia as the starting point of, uh, of where we see new innovation coming into the, to the, to the scene and not just focusing on, on Silicon Valley. Um, so I have a team in Shanghai and what they do a lot is, is testing out new platforms, working with the, the cutting edge uh, platforms in China because that's where we see the integration that will be copied by Facebook in six months. Uh, so we can stay on top of that by actually working a lot with, with Asian markets. So what, are the, what do you see big differences in the you know, East versus West? What do you see the differences in marketing in China, the Lego products versus where you, where you would go up other places? I, I think there's, uh, there's a ton of difference in like, the speed of development, uh, the scalability. Um, that creates uh, the background for, for a huge number of different startups that are really interesting in different ways. I think uh, for us it's the same thing with, with the consumer. Like parents love their kids in China, they love their kids in the US and Europe. So the same thing about the marketing stays the same, but, uh, but the small differences are in the ecosystem in, in China, as everyone knows. And what about um, in Asia? On the, you've talked to me before about some of your exciting uh, things that you've done and uh, startups you've seen over there. What, 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 where do you see the future? Well, I think, I think the whole super app um, concept with WeChat is, of course, extremely exciting uh, and interesting uh, and also a bit scary. Um, I think also the whole how messaging is developing to be the, the, the starting point of a, of, of a commercial transaction uh, down the line is really interesting. And I think you see companies like My2, for instance, a, a beautification application that is meant to just beautify your profile uh, picture uh, on, on social is turning into a hardware business at massive scale. I think that's, that's really interesting to see from a, from a Western perspective. Awesome. Well, we have a, a couple minutes left. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to you know, turn it back to you in a second. But any, any closing thoughts that you might want to give the audience again about um, this whole concept of you know, how best to position startups and corporates together to find innovation and the, what's the future look like? Well, I think uh, an advice is really to network and understand the people in the corporations because uh, there are a lot of people trying to change the companies. Uh, it's not always through the official channels. Uh, it's not through always an, an email. But then it's about understanding really the context uh, that, 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 that a person in a company uh, environment is, is in. I think that would be my, my, my advice. Awesome. Well, I, I agree. I mean, I'm from the startup side, I mean, you've stated things that I've you know, kind of lived, which is relationships are everything, right? And so uh, 
That's why I started my company in many respects. Nine out of 10 people buy products or services based upon a recommendation from a peer or friend. So build a relationship, um, try to establish credibility and add value. Um, focus on big disruptive you know, problems that you're trying to solve and be at the right place at the right time, hopefully, and, um, and hopefully you'll get some, some business from, from Lars, right? <laughs> Can't promise anything? No, but uh, we appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to be in front of you guys. We're going to be around, and as I mentioned, we're building um, relationships with startups you know, all over the world, and uh, you know, super excited. I think the next five to 10 years, in my opinion, are going to be you know, even more exciting than the last 50. There's tremendous innovation and disruption happening all over the world, um, and startups are going to be at the heart of that. And the big companies really need uh, the input and advice and leadership from startups. So we really are excited about you know what all you guys are doing and building out there, and, and look forward to working together. So thanks everybody, and hope you have a great conference. Thank you. Thanks, man.